Hey folks, I'm your woodshop teacher, Mr. Lauer, and in this series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how I use SketchUp to model a shed using 2x4 construction. Now for this series of videos, I'm going to be using SketchUp for Schools, which is a free version of SketchUp that's available to students and teachers. However, everything that we're going over in this video also applies to any paid subscription versions of SketchUp as well. I also want to point out that as we work our way through this series, it's assumed that you already know some basics about how to operate SketchUp. Things like using the basic tools, move copy, typing in dimensions, things like that. If you don't already know how to use SketchUp, that's fine. There's plenty of online resources for beginners, and if you subscribe to my channel, in the future I will be putting out a video for SketchUp basics to help you get started. So this right here is the finished version of what we're trying to accomplish. This shed is 10 foot by 10 foot, which is about the maximum size you'd be able to get away with in most jurisdictions without a permit. Of course, if you want to build anything smaller than this, you can modify these plans yourself, and I will try my best to have links in the description of all these videos so that you can actually have access to this SketchUp file and tweak it yourself. But if you want to learn how to use SketchUp to model something like this, then that's what this series is for. We're going to start with the basics. This video will start with the floor, and then we'll work our way up to framing the walls, door, window, if that's something you want to have in your shed, and then finally the roof, along with any trimming and sheathing options you may have. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the basics here, the floor. If we take a look underneath, we see that it consists of some 4x4 beams, and some 2x4 joists. Now all of these we're going to want to make as pressure treated. If you're actually going to build this, you need to make sure that anything that's close to the ground is pressure treated lumber, and that's really going to help against any mold, mildew, rot, that sort of thing. And this is designed to sit on top of some pier blocks or cinder blocks. You should not be building this directly onto the ground because even pressure treated in contact with the ground is going to rot out over time. So something like this on some pier blocks that counts as a temporary foundation and depending on your jurisdiction you may need to modify the size to conform with whatever regulations you may be dealing with. Like I said the foundation here is 10 foot by 10 foot and that works for my city, my jurisdiction. You may want to check with your city or county to find out what they allow. The flooring here is inch and an eighth subfloor, which you can get at any home store, Home Depot, Lowe's. Often this is sold as inch and an eighth tongue and groove subflooring. So I use this because it's a nice solid subfloor combined with this foundation here. It's going to be really strong and sturdy in case you need to uh, use this shed for any heavy equipment like rotting lawnmowers, tractors, that sort of thing. So let's get started with building this. So the first thing that we're going to want to have is a blank space since we're starting a brand new file and uh, we'll get rid of Dr. Temple here and we'll make sure to save this. SketchUp for Schools will autosave, but it only does that after you've already saved the file for the first time. So make sure that you save that file first so you don't cry later. Once you've got everything saved, then we can go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that I want to make is just a 10 foot by 10 foot square. So I'm going to type in, notice how the dimensions change as I type this in, 10 foot comma 10 foot, and that is going to make the square. I'm going to triple click this and make group. I don't need this for later, this is just to get me my perimeter, my area that I'm going to build my uh, shed floor into. So then I'm going to make the beams. Now you can see that the dimensions already start by saying 10 foot, that's my, my length dimension. And then, so I'm just going to hit comma, and what that's going to do is say that first dimension, just leave that as is. I want to alter the second dimension for my rectangle. So this is going to be a 4x4. Four four. A 4x4 four four is 3.5 inches by 3.5 inches. If you didn't know that, you know that. So 3.5 
hit enter, and then we are going to push pull this up 3.5, and uh, that's three and a half. Now we're going to triple click this to select the entire thing and make component. We'll call that beam. You can call it whatever you want, but I like naming things in a way that I can figure it out again later. So this is our first beam. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move copy this corner over. If you don't know how to do a move copy, you start moving an object and then hit control or uh, possibly option if you're on a Mac, and that will drop the original back in place and allow you to copy. It's a little more efficient than copy and paste, and I really prefer using it in SketchUp. So what we're going to want to do, actually, is uh, before after I do my move copy, let me say that again, do my move copy, I want to split this up evenly. So I'm going to hit divide three. When I do that, it uses the beam and divides it up into three equal sections. Um, I could have put these on 48 inch centers, which would make sense for the size of the plywood that we're typically going to use, but I really wanted this to be even. I wanted this to be symmetrical, at least for the beams. And the way that I'm thinking is going to be an even distribution of weight and support. So what's the on center on this? This is like three foot four and change. That's fine. I can deal with a little bit of um, wonkiness. Now we're going to turn this around and make our joists. So these are going to be rectangles. And uh, again, the first dimension is something like two foot 11 and 5 16 inches. Again, I don't really care so much about it being a wonky length. I can always measure that pretty precisely once I get these in place when I actually build this. So the first dimension we'll leave there and then 1.5 for our joist. Again, this is going to be a two by four. We'll triple click that, make component, and we'll call that floor joist. Now we're going to propagate these out through the rest of our model. So we'll drop one right there. Now this one I'm not going to divide up evenly because I do want these on 24 inch centers. So I will hit control to do a move copy, type 24. This is already inches, so I didn't include the little inches mark. And then times five. Okay, that was a little too much, so we'll do times four. And that looks pretty good. So these are all 24 inch centers. This one's probably a little shorter than 24 inch centers, but that's okay. I've got a standard spacing for most of these, and then I can just deal with the last one here. Now you may be asking, why don't I do this on 16 inch centers? Well, you can do it on 16 inch centers, and that would be a lot stronger. However, we're gonna be using inch and an eighth plywood for this, which can span a 48 by 24 inch gap, and that's perfectly acceptable. So rather than have to do more work and use more materials, we're going to go with the wider spacing for the floor. Now I'm going to select all of these joists and move copy all of them together, and I'm going to do that a second time. And this is one of the reasons why I decided to make all my beams even, is so I only have one length for all of these joists here, and it makes it a lot simpler. Now I have these spaced out. I am going to have to move them a little bit later, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Okay, I don't need this uh, square anymore, so I'm going to delete it. Now one thing I want to do is have a fascia across all of my beams. So what I'm going to do is double click on there, and I'm going to push pull my beam back by the thickness of a um, of a two by four. And then I'm going to take these three and bring these back to here. Now what I'm going to do is just make a rectangle, and this is going to be a two by four across the entire face. And what this is going to do is just help tie everything together. 1.5. And then we're going to triple click this, make component floor fascia. I'm sure there's another word other than fascia because it's not really fascia. It's part of the structure, but that's, that's all I know. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment down below and tell me what this part is called in a foundation, please. Thank you. And then I'm going to do, simply do the same thing on the other side. 
So bring this back to this edge here, take all three of them, and then bring this back here. Now, since I made this a component, I want to keep these uh, linked together. So I'm going to move copy this one back to the front. And now I still have 10, 10 foot by 10 foot overall. So that's what it looks like so far. Okay, looks pretty good. Now, it is very important to point out that these joists here, you would not want to actually toenail these directly into the um, beams and call it good. You would want to put these on with metal joist hangers, uh, which is something that you can buy at your local home store. It does add a little bit of cost. I mean, these things are maybe like a dollar, two dollars a piece or something, and you need two per joist. So it does add up a little bit. Um, the alternative is to make a two by four frame sitting on top of all your beams. That really comes down to a style choice. There's there's not one perfect right way to build a shed or a deck or any structure. This just happens to be the way that I'm showing you for this project. So now we have our frame. We need to sheathe it with some plywood, and this is going to be our subflooring. And for a shed, it's actually just going to be our regular flooring. So we're going to start off with a standard four by eight sheet of plywood. So we're going to look at our dimensions. It looks like our long one is five. So we're going to type eight foot comma four foot. You can also do 36 by 48 inches. And there is our piece of plywood. We're going to push pull this up and come up one space one slash eight. Very important that you do the space there, not an underscore, not a dash or anything. That tells SketchUp I want one foot and an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna triple click that, make component, we'll call this floor. Okay, now let's look at this here. One thing that we need to make sure of anytime that we do any flooring or walls for that matter is any sheathing, any plywood, any sheet goods, drywall, the edge of every sheet of anything you put on a wall or a floor needs to be supported by a beam, a joist, a stud, or something. It needs to sit directly on the center of that stud in order to be supported. So if we look at the end here, if we flip this upside down, you can see that this edge is clearly not supported by anything. Now we have a few options to do with this. We can take this beam and we can move it over. And that means we're gonna to have to change the size of all of our joists and stuff like that. And that, that's acceptable, but it seems like a lot of work and it makes it asymmetrical and I don't really like that. So what we're gonna do instead, we're gonna take our imaginary circular saw uh, as represented by our push-pull tool. And we're just going to push-pull this back and what we want it to do is sit exactly on the center of this beam. Now, fortunately with SketchUp, it is very easy to find the centers. Uh, so we have midpoint outside active. That appears to be directly on the center of this beam. We're going to drop it there and call it good. So this ends up being six foot seven and seven sixteenths, give or take. If you're to actually make this project, you just lay that piece of plywood out, mark it where the center is, it would be pretty close to this measurement, and you could cut it with your circular saw from there. Now, if we look at this edge, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty close um, at first. But the problem is, let's move this out of the way. The problem is, if you look in here really close, the edge of our plywood is not actually supported by this joist. And that is a big problem. We want to make sure that the joist actually, uh, the center of the joist actually hits the edge of the plywood. So what we can't do, we can't cut this piece of plywood any longer, okay? Uh, Typically, your sheets of plywood are going to be four foot by eight foot um, that you get from the home store. You can't just buy a 10 foot by 10 foot sheet of plywood and let alone transport it home in your Honda Civic. Uh, that's just not going to work. Uh, maybe you could custom order one, but it would be super expensive and what would even be the point? So you're dealing with four foot by eight foot. That's what you have to work with. That's what you have to work around when you're designing. 
So this is already four feet long. We could scooch this over and then we'll end up with a big gap right here. And that doesn't seem, you could do that, but it doesn't seem all that great. What I would rather do, uh, let's put our beam back where it was. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to select all of these joists. Try that again. I'm gonna select all of these joists, including these four here. Okay, I have them all selected. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit my move key. I'm gonna pick up the midpoint of this joist and I'm just gonna slide it over until it hits that edge. Drop it right there. Now, what I ended up doing is I maintained the 24 inch spacing between these four joists. So these are all 24 inches apart still, it's a standard spacing. Now what I did was I shortened this space a little bit, and this space was already short, so I lengthened it a little bit. You just wanna go through and check and make sure that your maximum stud spacing is still the way it's supposed to be, I guess joists in this case. So as long as it's under 24 inches and the majority of my spacings are a standard length, that's gonna be good enough for me. And what's best about this is this piece of plywood stays four feet. That means that I have less work to do, less uh, sawing to do when it comes down to it. Now I'm just gonna move copy this over here. And since I kept the same spacing on my joists and I moved them all over instead of just one, this one hits perfectly on the center just as it should. Now I need to fill in the rest of this space. So I'm going to uh, select both of those pieces of plywood, move copy them down. You can see I have a bunch hanging off the edge. Now these are components. So if I were to modify one, it modifies all of them. I don't exactly want that. So what I'm gonna do instead is make sure both of these are selected. Right click, make unique. When I have both of these selected together, it makes them unique together, but keeps them, since they are already linked, it keeps those two linked together. So I can double click here and bring this in like so. And notice how these two move together, but they're no longer linked to the originals. Now I can do the same thing over here. We're going to move copy this corner Bring that over here. Again, you can see there's way too much hanging off. So we're gonna right click, make unique. And then we'll just push pull these in like so. If you don't remember how to get inside a component to edit it, it's just double click. Okay, and that is the end of our flooring. So what have we accomplished today? We have made a series of beams out of four by fours. We've linked them together with two by four joists on 24 inch centers, pretty fairly spaced. And then we have topped it all off with some inch and an eighth plywood, which is going to act as our flooring slash subfloor and uh, help tie off this platform. The next step is going to be making the walls. We're gonna start working up a little more vertically uh, using two by four construction, sometimes called stick framing, and then we'll just proceed from there. So if you like this video and wanna see the rest of the series, make sure you like and subscribe down below so you don't miss anything. See you in the next video.